This year, we've been working harder than ever to fill up our pantries, get all stored up with food before winter hit. And it's a good thing because the winter just landed and it landed really hard and with a fury. So I think we're gonna be in for a long winter and we'll really enjoy what's in the pantry. But I wanted to take you guys along on the tour and show you what's in the pantry, the freezers, and maybe even some other spaces. It's pretty normal for us to have a really full pantry when it comes to our canned goods, but there's some things that have happened a little bit differently this year and I'm excited to show them to you. I want you to keep in mind that in this house, we're usually feeding about 13 to 15 people every single meal. So we have a lot of food stored. You may not need this much storage. This will get us through the winter very nicely with a little bit of extra but this isn't a prepper pantry. This isn't stocking up for the end of the world. This is what we actually need to get through the year. So let's take a look at what we've got. This has just a lot of our canned goods. And at this point of the year, we're actually still butchering. And so we don't have a lot of meat products on the shelf yet. That's coming in the next few weeks. But what we do have is a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables. Something we're really excited about this year is the amount of freeze drying we've done because we love getting to use the freeze dried food. It actually tastes really fresh when you rehydrate it. So let's look at some of the things. We have a whole lot of freeze dried tomatoes over here. I love freeze dried tomatoes because I can just run them through the dicer, stick them onto the freeze dryer trays, push a few buttons, and in about 24 to 36 hours, I have something that I can store. I just vacuum seal them right into the mason jars. With just a touch, it will completely crumble. I can turn this into a tomato paste. I can turn it into a sauce. I can turn it into just diced tomatoes, just all depending on how much water I put into it and how much I powder it before I do it. So I really like this because it becomes incredibly versatile and the um, flavor is amazing. Let's see, we've done freeze dried corn. That rehydrates really well. We have cases of freeze dried green beans. These are green and purple beans. And again, you have to figure out how to rehydrate them right. These take a little bit longer than some of the other things. Some things you just kind of put them, add some water and they rehydrate instantly. These take a couple of hours to rehydrate at room temperature, but they turn out great when you do. So we really like them. We're doing a lot of cooked pumpkin this year, even though we could just be pureeing it and sticking it into the freezer. One, the freezers are all pretty full, but two, we found that when we do this, we can powder it and when we rehydrate it, it makes the silkiest, smoothest pumpkin puree for a pumpkin pie or custard or whatever we wanna use it for. So we really like this. This is something we grab for all the time. This is a bell pepper and onion mixture. Just uh, run through the dicer and then lay it out on the sheets and you know, done completely raw. And this is great. You can just throw this into anything you're making and it almost instantly rehydrates. We've got quite a bit of fruit down there. And this is another thing that I'm really liking. This is new for us this year. This is the first year we have grown mushrooms. And so here we were able to grow a lot of wine cap mushrooms this year. I mean a lot. I mean probably several bushels of them. And so we just chopped them up and freeze dried them and they turn out great. They rehydrate perfectly. They also turn into a perfect powder. So if you want to make an almost instant uh, cream of mushroom soup, it's really easy to do with this. Okay, what else do we have over here? We have some of our hard ciders that Josh and I like to make. Obviously at the moment, I'm not drinking a lot of them, <laughs> but this is a pear cider. This is an apple cider that has a lot of crab apple in it. So it's got a real nice tangy flavor. And then that is just a pure hard cider down there. We like to have those on hand for summer drinking or anything like that. Then we have our canned goods. Right here, we have a whole lot of different jams and jellies and condiments. There's a lot of applesauce. This is a crab applesauce. Isn't that a beautiful color? It's really tangy. 
So we tend to mix it like one jar of this with one jar of regular applesauce because it is pretty sour, but it's so good. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah, lots of fun. This is actually a little beef broth put on this side. This is usually the fruit side, but just a little jar of beef broth. We've got relishes. This is a corn relish that I really like. So if we have any extra corn, I always make sure to make a corn relish. Okay, let's take a peek over here. Pickles, jams, <laughs> lots of pickled beets, more freeze dried stuff. And this is some of the lard that I'm still working off of from when I rendered lard in March. We have just butchered the pigs and so we have a whole nother round of lard to do. So this shelf is gonna fill back up with lard. We'll have to move these things off somewhere else, but we'll keep using these up first. You can see we have different grades of lard. These are ones that I overcooked just a little bit. They still are great. They're darker in color. We just use these for braising or for roasting, uh, for vegetables, anything like that. This lard over here is actually mostly used for things like baked goods or for pastries. So it's nice and white and the flavor is amazing. We do have some meat stashed in here. This is just plain beef. And this will probably get used up pretty soon because this has been in here for a little bit. Plus we're about to bring in a couple more venison and those will have to get canned because there's no more room in the freezer. So we'll be adding a lot of venison onto the shelves in the next few weeks. Same thing, we've got quite a bit of chicken still. This is great to go for a nice long time. It may be ugly, <laughs> but it's so amazing to have this sitting on your shelf ready for meals to go. It is delicious, really amazing to have. I really like it. This year we had a bumper crop of plums and so we have a ton of plum jelly. Just absolutely boxes and boxes of it and that's really nice. This is what we tend to use as our go-to and we'll use this for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or when we're doing any sort of baked good that requires a jelly glaze or anything like that. So we really like this stuff. Now, in case you were thinking that we make absolutely everything that we eat here, that's just not true. There's a lot of things that I can't make or maybe we had a bad year on and so I'll buy them in in bulk and make sure we have them on hand. That goes for things like olives. Can you tell we really like our olives? <laughs> we love getting really good olives. Usually I bulk up on things. Here's canned olives. We can absolutely not grow these in Idaho. We we'll usually do bulk orders from Azure Standard and get in a lot of really good produce in canned form through Azure Standard. This year's fruit, because we had such a late spring, did not produce very well. And most of it, you know, went into the freeze dryer or into jams and jellies. So we went ahead and stocked up on some good organic pear halves and even some peaches, just so we can have some nice options for breakfast. I always like to keep on a few random things like coconut cream or coconut milk. I love these things. <laughs> I grew up with these and I haven't been able to replicate them really well yet. So I still buy some of these here and there. I like to keep a little bit of canned tuna and a little bit of canned salmon on hand, maybe some clams and a few things like that. Extra salsas, a little bit of anchovies for the pregnant woman because just because. There's also more freeze dried onions. We still have some coming in. We had a great onion year. So we have a lot of onions and we were able to put a lot of them up and a lot of apple cider. So that's what's mostly in the downstairs pantry. Let's go take a look at the bulk bins. We actually bulk buy in a lot of things like grains and flours and sugar and salt. So we have quite a few barrels sprinkled around the place where we can find to fit them and a lot of five gallon buckets. This year I went ahead and just purchased bulk pasta and it's been amazing. I really like it. So we've been able to get all different types from penne, macaroni to spaghetti, even a little bit of orzo and just brought those in so that we have them on hand ready to go. I really like making homemade pasta, but this year there just wasn't the time and so this was a great way to go. The other things that we like to keep in bulk 
we have all sorts of five gallon buckets that we keep around. Most of them are in the upstairs pantry, which is the working pantry. It's right by the kitchen. And so I'll show you those in a few minutes. But the other things we like to grab are gallon jugs of different things that we're gonna use. Now for these, I try to make sure I'm only getting what I'm gonna use in about a year space, but we get honey. We're not making our own honey yet. Hopefully that'll come the next few years. Molasses, coconut oil, peanut butter, vinegars, things like that. And we like to bring those in in gallon jugs. I tend to do a big stock up every fall to make sure that I have it all on hand so that when the winter storms hit, I don't really have to worry about going anywhere if I don't want to. It just takes the stress out of having to go to the grocery store. We don't have a root cellar proper yet, so we've been experimenting with different areas around the house that'll keep root veggies cold and moist without frozen. And so this year we're trying out a new area and this is an area in our basement. It is underneath the storm door. So the stairs would normally come down here, but we've removed the treads now that it's winter. And all we have is the metal non-insulated storm door up here now. And then this is the insulated door. So <laughs> we have this space. It's slightly underground, so it's not completely freezing, but we're keeping an eye on things because it has been getting down to three degrees at night. So that's really cold. And I don't want all my root veggies to freeze. So at the moment, they're all covered up with blankets, but in here we have boxes of homegrown potatoes, beets, carrots, a lot of parsnips and some cabbage. And they should be okay in here, totally covered for a short amount of time. But one of the really important elements of a root cellared space is not only the cool and the damp, but also airflow. So these blankets won't be able to stay on here all winter. We're gonna have to get them off as soon as the overnight low temperatures come back up a little bit. Hopefully that'll be next week. This next area is our actual working pantry. It's right off the kitchen and I gotta tell you guys, it's kind of a mess. We've got a lot of people working out of this pantry and so it gets destroyed really quickly. But I wanted to show you what I've got going on in here anyways. Not only is it messy, but it's also very cold in here. And that's because this is an exterior wall. And so I have access to windows on both sides of this. So when the weather is like this and it's really cold, I can open the windows and I can actually get this down to refrigerator temperature in here and have an additional walk-in refrigerator, which is really nice, but I do have to watch and make sure things don't start freezing. Right here, we have an area that we call our appliance bar. I don't really prefer all my appliances just hanging out on my kitchen counter. I feel like it makes it really cluttered. And so I like having them all set up right here. This is the egg shelf. And you can see we are still overflowing with eggs. We are getting in about 40 to 50 eggs a day. So we're still freeze drying eggs. We're still eating a ton of eggs. And that is a huge blessing this time of year. Now, if you look up, you can see some of the things I've got going on and hanging. I tried out a Victorian era grape preservation technique this year and I was able to make my grapes last fresh for about six weeks longer than they normally would have if I had just brought them in. Now we need to start eating them. They're starting to shrivel a little bit. They turn into raisins if I left them too long. <laughs> but it's been really neat to see how long just by hanging them in a cool space I can make them last. I've got a lot of overflow herbs up here. I have my cayennes actually still finishing ripening and drying down. And by the end of the week, I am going to have slabs of bacon hanging in here because I've been preserving bacon the old fashioned way. Check it out, it's all the way back here in the end. This is an old fashioned cured bacon. It's still in the curing process. Tomorrow I'll be ready to pull it out, wash it, dry it, and hang it up for a few days before I'm gonna give it a good smoking. And then it will literally hang back here in the pantry until we use it. It'll be completely preserved and ready to last just like this. And the flavor is 
absolutely amazing. Store-bought has nothing on this. This is so good like this. The rest of the stuff we have going on in here, this is just a lot of overflow spices and things that we grab really quickly, baking ingredients, things like that, that we like to keep kind of on hand close to the kitchen. Here we are out in the garage and this is where we keep a bunch of our freezers. Now, we have to have a lot of meat, about a ton of meat for our family to eat for the whole year. And since we grow it ourselves, we need to be able to do it all at once and store it for the year until we use it up. We usually kind of butcher everything in the fall. And so this is the moment where our freezers are absolutely at the fullest. So let's take a look. So far this year, we've butchered about 150 chickens, about three turkeys, a couple of geese, two pigs, three deer from hunting, a beef. We're about to butcher about two sheep uh, this weekend. And so all of that at the moment is piled into this. Now, usually it's a little bit more organized than this is, but right now, a lot of this meat is the meat that we're setting aside for grinding. Whether it's pork or venison, we're gonna have a big grind day and get all of our grinding out of the way. We'll make ground meat of all different types, sausages and uh, venison snacks, dehydrated venison snacks out of all of it. Ooh, and it's gonna be really good. This is the last bit of space available in the freezer and it will clear out a little bit more because a few of the things that we like to keep on hand is, well, one, we've got all of that pork fat that we're going to render into lard, but we also find that our dogs do much better if we save as many of the bones from butchering as possible and keep them available to feed the dogs in addition to dog food all throughout the winter. Winter, They just hold their condition so much better and they always come out of the winter much healthier and much happier. Again, this is a ton of food and your family probably doesn't need this much food, but I really recommend that you start figuring out how to bulk buy, how to store food, how to start preserving some of your own food and you get it put up for leaner times, whether that's winter or inflation or whatever you need. If you want to learn how to bulk store food and buy it, check out this video right here.